Welcome everybody and hello again to the next session of our Vampire God King series. So last time we left off with a wonderful colony that has a pretty n nasty visitation of some mechanoids. I mean, this ain't the most horrible setup of mechanoids I've ever seen. Like, there's uh, also a new type of centipede in this one. They, it has a minigun. These got introduced with the biotech DLC. So my plan is going to be a quite simple one. We're just going to not leave our base anymore. Nifty, hey? So jokes aside, this is a really, really good trick to just make sure that your dudes are not going to get anywhere close to the uh, mech cluster because, you know, we want other people to resolve that issue for us. We don't need to go outside anymore because I got everything I need. So that's pretty good. The only thing that's uh, pissing me off a little bit is the drought. But, uh, well, there's worse things out there. So, let's check on out how's the situation. We have still that recruitment process running on Huzish, right? Right. But beyond that, we have a lot of uh, slaves right now running, and Lord Troy is uh, hanging out in the Deathrest casket. Okay, wonderful. So, it's going to be quite a fun thing. Oh, we cannot... Mm, all right. That's one thing that I need to uh, take care about, take care of. I cannot leave my, my, my new traps unattended. I mean, I could also just set up a new zone that'll uh, allow us to play around with the mechanoids as well. but I'm not really interested. I just realized that uh, I'm going to give up on that steam geyser. I don't need it that badly, so let's just uh, let's just pretend it ain't there. All right. So it'll take a couple of days until this thing goes live. So we have some uh, grace period to refill the traps. By the way, that mammoth worm doesn't need to go back, doesn't it? Okay. So, research-wise, we are more and more capable of getting towards the finale of this run. So, <clears throat> I'm quite happy to see that, although it's way more optimistic than it is realistic to uh, think that we would be already on our way to the uh, finale of that run. There's a lot of things that we have to deal with beforehand. So, well, we're gonna do this, don't? Yeah, let's do this. So I just figured lately that I have such problems with my uh, spacing on that base. As much as I like that base, it still is a bit of a uh, problematic thing. Tyrannius Alexandrius, hey there. Welcome, man. So, my plan here was now to um, set up my high-tech manufacturing area now in that area. Yeah, it's a bit funky looking, but uh, I don't mind. I'm just uh, I'm just taking the uh, geography as it is. <laughs> right on. Let's do this. So. While the mechanoids aren't uh, aren't wheezing around, we are perfectly able to do our our stuff as we see fit. I like what how this apartment box is looking like. It's pretty cool. All in all, that black and red design is uh, really slapping. I like that. So let's see. Keeping an eye out on the countdown activator there, because I don't want my dudes to kill themselves accidentally. That would be a shame. So...
we're not going to go on any raids outside. I'm a little bit sad that I uh, kind of like don't play these features enough usually. But uh, this colony won't be any uh, any different than the usual colonies of mine. The thing though is that, uh, well, I could just go for a uh, expedition-based playstyle one day soon. I mean, I, I almost uh, started a run which had a goal like uh, the the stranded spaceship somewhere on the planet. Something like an internal, <clears throat> like the endless caravan mode. That's uh, one of the few things that I haven't played yet in this game and I feel like would be a nice thing to try out as well. Well, usually it's quite easy. Put in nice flooring, put in nice uh, valued beds and furniture and uh, well, if you want to make it uh, more appealing to your for yourself, that's a little bit more difficult, though. So, the Crimson Carnival. Alright, but we're not going to do that without Troy, don't we? How long does he have to uh, death rest there? 3.6 days. Well, okay, we'll have to do our carnival without him, then. Leader present, yeah. Leader sleeping. And I don't want to wake him up yet again to just put him back, back into the casket again after. It just doesn't feel like a good idea there. We also need some uh, some proper flooring here in the lab. Alright. Expanding the trap maze a bit. To make it more amazing. But as soon as that mech cluster is waking up, I have to uh, tune down everything here. I don't want a uh, uncontrolled uh, encounter with a centipede. Thank you. I also ordered some uh, EMP gear, so uh, Noah is working on these as well. Because there's uh, nothing fancier than uh, EMP gear against mechanoids. Okay, so we got now finally some black insect kitten. I was actually hoping for that stuff because next step we're going to make ourselves dusters. Black dusters, of course. I was a little bit torn between taking uh, dusters and capes, but you know, that's okay. Would be still cooler to have night leather, but you know. You can't have everything, I guess. That should be pretty spiffy. Right on. I'm spending my limestone blocks quite a lot there, but I... I don't mind. I get no replenishments there. Not as if that would be a big problem, but... Uh, well. Let's do some digging then. Alrighty, so this makes up for two new apartment blocks. So we gotta dig it out entirely here. There we go. Let's start on out with that. I still don't really know what we're going to do with that room here, but, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'll find a, uh, I'll find a purpose for that. Spaceship chunks in my front yard. We have to deconstruct them, actually. So, countdown, countdown activator is in five hours, so, uh, dude, Noah... I'm begging you, get on in there. We uh, we better cancel the 
jobs out there too. Good old. So I wasn't able to bring uh, to increase my uh, my trap maze, but uh, well, got a somewhere nevertheless. Hey, where's my construction? So Norbert is the best dude for that job. Norb, would you kindly? There we go. So from this night on, I'm uh, I'm forbidding the. The outside doors, except for maybe this one here, well, might get us into some problems. Actually, actually not. Just going to forbid these stacks there, so nobody of my haulers gets some funky ideas. All right, mechanoids have woken up. So things are kind of nasty now. Tesseron, weren't these guys the shield breakers? I think I don't know how these are supposed to work, but we'll surely, sadly, find out. Hopefully by just looking at the mechanoids killing off other people outside there in the bars. Let's see about that, though. Okay, then. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to finish that room here. That's all I want to do. Just keep a uh, keep an eye out on the blue dots here on the map. Make sure that nobody moves outside too far. So, what's Nelson up to? Ah, he's harvesting the last couple of trees there. But uh, honestly, let's uh, cancel those appointments. There's no good reason for him to risk his life like that. And uh, let's just cancel out that door too. And make sure that after they finish that room, we should be safe for now. I mean, I find it always damn appealing to have some uh, mechanoid cluster outside defending my base. Because these guys, they will eat up uh, quite a substantial amount of raiders. And due to the fact that uh, this uh, is looking like that, you know, if raiders come from this angle, there is a slight chance that they won't provoke the mechanoids, but that's pretty much the only angle that's left. So, I'm down. And just in case you want to catch the next stream of these live, just uh, check out the description box. There's links to my Discord and to my Twitter, where I do announce all those streams before they happen, so uh, knock yourself out. Also, be so kind and check out those support links down there. Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee are ways and means to support this channel. If you'd be so kind to check them out, you'd already make me darn happy. Well... We got the MP NATOs. Great. Well, I'm mostly carving out this area of the mountain to make sure that we got ourselves some uh, some fresh limestone to work with. I actually, don't really need these built in the, these rooms there. But I, I have uh, kind of, I've come to one big conclusion in RimWorld. It's basically always worth uh, checking on out the... Uh, or no, having some extra rooms is almost always worth it. And here, we're going slow-mo. Hey, Carlzer, welcome. Pretty good, pretty good. We're going to see the, uh, the, uh, the epic fight of a nomadic caravan against a uh, mechanoid cluster. I think it's going to go dirty and ugly. Let's see. They don't really seem to be uh, that well prepared. They have muskets though, so... Uh, let's see how that will go. Muskets are actually quite kick-ass, in case you didn't know. They have a extremely high armor penetration. So... They took down the first Lancer. Good job. So, at least there's some success on their side. I love this. You know, that's one of my favorite things to happen. 
to have a mechanoid cluster with a relatively harmless uh, threat thing and uh, to uh, watch the uh, trade caravans and all of them uh, do sit out. That's always amazing. The only thing that usually pisses me off is that uh, I'm, I'm getting negative reputation with those folks, but honestly, here I don't care at all because, you know, this faction here is not made to have any friends, you know. They are supposed to be hated by everybody, and that's uh, why it doesn't really matter too much. The only thing that really makes me a bit sad there is all that good stuff that's uh, just getting uh, caught in the flames, but I uh, guess there's always something. do like the uh, minigun centipedes, though, gotta say. I really like them, because they are a... Uh, a sane uh, step between the Neutron Blasters and uh, and the rest of the Mechanoid Fray. I like that. I really think that's one of the best uh, balancing steps that I've seen so far. <laughs> well, it's one of my favorite ways of dealing with Mechanoids, to just uh, let them uh, get killed by, uh, by Neutrals. So, here, the Royal Tribute Collector. Let's see. I assumed that uh, when people come from this angle, they might be not triggering the mechanoids, and I, I was right about that, wasn't I? They're just not uh, touching the uh, acro radius there, but uh, yeah, if they, so the aggressors have to take this angle for them to uh, trigger the mechanoids. Okay. Well, well. Poor trade caravan, and they blame it on me. What am I supposed to have to do with that? Sheesh. Always those blamey tribals. So, Troy will... Stand up soon, I guess? Yeah, here. There's the timer. So... So let's do the Crimson Carnival when Lord Master Troy is back up on his feet. So I find that a very, very um, good reason to celebrate that uh, the Vampire Lord has uh, awoken from his slumber. Absolutely uh, legit. Fun Crimson Carnival. Great. Uh, that's what I like to hear. We got six development points out of that. Awesome. Quite a lot. So, Imperials had a uh, social fight again. What's this guy wearing? Top hat. That's a, uh, yeah, comedic style. Cool. With the addition of styles, we really have some some big new um, individualization happening on these. That's pretty amazing. Okay, now then. Uh, oh. Say what? We don't have any power running over there? Well, let's change that. Pretty much a sucker for <clears throat> completed uh, power grids, you know. Just gives me that distinct feeling of safety. Cool. Now, this is going to be the place where I'm going to do all my, my super high-tech crafting. At least that's been the plan. You think those are a few, that, that's a little bit of many of those wall lights. You might be probably right, but I don't give a damn. I like a well-lit uh, high-tech room. So. Of course, the proper lighting. coolest thing about those um, 
colored lights. Oh, I can also use the bed lamps. You can do some crazy things like uh, color mixing too. So here you have a... Uh, if you now go for a yellow effect, you see it, it turns greenish. Somewhere in between you get you start to get greener tones. Pretty amazing. You can do some really, really fun lighting effects there. This way. So... Is there any research happening these days? Yes, it is. Amazing. All right, precision rifling will be the next level there. Yeah, the uh, the lighting has uh, also been changed with biotech. You know, the fact that you can cho choose your um, lighting color so seamlessly—that's new. Oh come on, dude! You're just so stupid. Disaster. You don't need to sleep on your floor. Uh, on the floor. Don't act out like you would be a vegetable, my man. Okay, so what's left here on that side is one centipede. But, uh, I'm not gonna touch that thing. If, n if I can avoid it. Oh, nightlings. They have night leather. Damn. My my wishful thinking is still that we get some uh, we get some nightlings domesticated one day. So we can have some uh, some steady production of that night of that night leather. Hizish, welcome my man. So uh, this dude is going to be my man handler. Uh, my man handler, yeah. <laughs> My main handler. My main handler. Because I do have a couple of people that aren't aren't too bad with uh, handling animals, but this dude is just uh, the best that I could wish for. So I'm going to give him that job with a secondary um, prioritization of other useful things. How about that? Well, RimWorld is totally worth your time. That's all that I can say. It's, uh, it's uh, literally the, the best game when it comes down to uh, creating random stories that I've ever played in my life. And, uh, well, it still, it sure has its weaknesses, like everything has, but, uh, well, I haven't seen any game that performs that well and is so crazily moddable, you know. So, Kazuko, before anything uh, horrible happens, I'm going to teach you the way out. And Dwarf Fortress is totally up my alley, too. I mean, I don't know, I kind of like, uh, mean, meant to learn dwar classic Dwarf Fortress before the Steam release, but then I realized that probably I won't be doing myself too much of a favor with that. So, uh... Learning that stuff all anew, well, I do plan to do quite a lot of content with that, as you might already uh, have assumed, so, well, it's kind of like a difficult situation for me. For one, I want to be uh, quite quick with the content creation for Dwarf Fortress. For the other thing, I have no clue how much resemblance to the uh, OG game the new um, Steam version will have. So if it's even worth it to uh, to learn these things right now, you know, if you catch my drift. But um, since one of my uh, planned projects for this month has just uh, disintegrated, I really do need some new project there. Let's see about that. Norbert, inspired creativity. Hmm. Hope we get that precision rifling done before his inspiration does wear off. That would be amazing. 
<clears throat> okay. I honestly think that uh, Troy would win a uh, bra a punch out with the centipede gunner, especially with this uh, with the uh, with the posse behind him. Shouldn't be any issue at all. But at the same time, I don't want to uh, take the risk there. And also, I don't want to waste that uh, splendid opportunity there to uh, let other people take care of my problems, you know. It's always one of my favorite ways of dealing pro uh, of, of resolving problems in RimWorld. Let somebody else do your dirty work, you know. Yeah, I mean, me neither, Conter. I think uh, at the end of the day, I might be actually confusing myself more than anything else if I'd be now diving deeper into the uh, old school version, only to find that a lot of things have been uh, changed for the Steam version. Kind of a hard thing for me, but uh, I gotta admit, I tried to uh, get into Dwarf Fortress already four or five times, all on my own, of course, without guides and all. And I realized that this was maybe a bad choice, but, uh, well. I'm a uh, passionate uh, autodidactic person, so... I always have to try it on my own first, you know. Yeah, the Steam version is on the 6th of Dece December, I know. So, this place is coming along damn nicely. I'm a little bit afraid because our lord and savior Randy hasn't dumped any uh, crap on us since a while. But, uh, well... I really hope that uh, we're going to get some uh, some training on the grizzly bear, but I... Yeah, well, I have insect meat for it, so it should work. Okay, with finally one animal uh, tender here available. So. There we go. Proper lighting here, dudes. There we go. I want to have a black flooring for those rooms with the red lighting. I think that might come in uh, super spiffy. Don't have that much slate here yet, though. So. Let's put up some mining orders soon again, but for now, I just leave them with that one here. Don't want to put up too many orders at once, you know. It only makes things worse. I do quite, uh, feel, I, I do feel quite rich right now, though. There's quite a lot of stuff in my inventory here. There we go. That's just the influx of building material that I was waiting for. As soon as we have researched the precision rifling too, things will become super good. So how about that? We're going to slap up another one of these. Smashed stump, seriously. And uh, file cabinets, so... Uh, How many of these are possible? Nobody tells me. So let's try it out, nevertheless. Masterwork animal bed. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, a masterwork bed is uh, interesting in so far as it has a uh, higher rest effectiveness modifier, so. The animals sleeping on this bed will, uh, will be uh, rested faster, whatever that's worth for us. Hey, now we're talking.
Kraken. So, assault rifle time, boys. I don't have the necessary um, components, though. So that sucks a bit. At the same time, I don't really dare to go outside there to uh, to grab them. So let's see, how many of these suckers are linked to that thing? So one wooden file cabinet. If I'm not mistaken, these... Uh, be working there because they're different ones it's a bit of a uh, cheesy uh, exploit there but I don't care okay now then machining table we need the assault rifles how many as many as possible just my favorite gun or the Typical standard encounter. Okay. So, the only thing. I want those. Components. So we're going to do some, uh, some careful things. Repairing limestone wall. So this ain't careful. Okay. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know. Save them from themselves and such. Just a necessary evil. That's enough components now to at least uh, start uh, tinkering on one of them guns, so... That's a good start. And we get some fresh cloth in here. Super good. So, let's get back into the flooring. Asphalt. Hmm. Well... Let's use them steel tiles. I got so much steel on that colony here, and I, I know that I will regret to have set that at some point in the near future, because I know that there is actually no such thing as too much steel, but uh, that's fine. I do want to rock some sterile tiles for, uh, for a bad room here, so I'm not going to go for that. Let's see how that works if we do have a couple of uh, default white lights in between. Yeah, that is actually better for the atmosphere here. done it. It's pretty nasty. So I really have no clue what to do with that big old room there, but uh, in the worst case we'll just store something one day in there. Whatever it might be, we'll see about that. So, 
let's give these rooms some interior as well. Exactly. You cannot have too much storage, you're right about that. Especially once you start building uh, large-scale stuff in this game, you you end up with uh, tremendously large um, stockpiles of things. Alright, we're not running out of food at any point. There's no other outside threat coming up against us. Well, don't want to wonder about that. And the grizzly bear is getting trained again. Good stuff. My dude is ish. Teenage Itakin. So. Let's do this one more time. Let's check on out if somebody wants to suicide on that again. So, Norbert, you got all the gold in your pockets. Wonderful. There we go. Just gathering up the items that I need. Ah, beautiful. Our scientists now have a proper chair to chill in. And, uh, well, yeah. So both uh, file cabinets link to that thing, even though they are technically both the same item. That's a bit cheaty of me. How dare I? But whatever. So, <laughs> okay. Randy as a storyteller is one of the weirdest things ever. Sometimes you have super um, safe times. <laughs> Sometimes you have haywire drop pods. Amazing. So, oh boy, this this will be wild. Oh, okay. So, let's check this out. So, um our new dudes, they uh they are supposed to grab themselves something to fight with. Easier said than done. All right. So, uh you folks, you basically stay back then. Piggy pigs! I gotta bring up some of my dudes out here, though, because I'm bet I, I bet that a couple of them will be not busy with the uh, with the mechanoids there. Man, I love it when that goes down like that. So, dude called Wart is uh, is doing his thing, charging on us, but he's the only dude. I bet he doesn't, uh, make it through the, uh... Wow. Y you know, that's the frickin' pig skin genome, you know? That's just the, uh, reduced pain thing. Pain minus 50 person. They keep walking and walking and walking. I love this, because it basically mitigates cheesy strategies like mine quite a lot. That's a good thing. Pigskins are nowadays darn Brazilian suckers, and uh, that's amazing, you know. So uh, the pigskins are 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 seemingly uh, winning against the cluster for me. There we go. They even try to run away from that. Amazing, cool stuff, dude. All right, we're we're going to do our thing in the meantime, while while the pirates are still busy. Let's see how much uh, destruction the centipede gunner can still do. Yeah, enough to make them flee. Brilliant. So, the centipede ain't gone. Hmm. So. Usually that means the remaining mechanoids are going to uh, haunt your base, so.
Leave that to the boss. I hope that doesn't go back, go bad on me. But the uh, centipede is darn slow. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty positive about me being able to long jump on that thing. There we go. That thing is so damn uh, banged up. Troy should be actually able to take it down all on his own. He's got a masterwork sword, and uh, he's a freaking vampire. If not, his uh, his posse is there for him. I just want to uh, check on out. What's the power of these dudes? You know. Yeah. And besides that, I find it extremely uh, fitting to the to the narrative, you know. So, point cack teacher, yeah. Guess today's your lucky day. If uh, Troy makes it in time to you, there we go. You're one of mine now. Well, you know, we need prisoners every now and then. Balkan, hey there. So happy to see you, mate. And Pixel, welcome. Quite late? Well, I wouldn't say you're really late. 41 minutes isn't really late. Happy to have you, folks. So, we did it. We, uh, well, we, we actually didn't do anything, honestly. The, the raiders did all of the work there, but, um, that's my personally fa my, my personal favorite approach to these problems, you know. Deal knife. Sheesh. But we have to take care of that uh, wild mob of feralisks there. That's seven of them at the end of the day. That's quite dangerous. So, uh, whoopsie. Unwavering prisoner. I don't give a damn about you being unwavering or anything. You're my meal. So we're we're going to uh, do do the no lex treatment here. You know me, usually I'm not a big fan of these things, but um, until the game has given me the option to automatically feed off of my uh, off of my minions, I will re rely on the uh, no next method as well, because you know right now there's no uh, no me ways and means to automate the blood feeding of your uh, of your sanctifages from your um, from your people. You cannot even automatically feed off of slaves, and that's a little bit sad. Speaking about feeding, um, it's time for the nibbles. So. Mm, He's pretty empty, you know. So. Well, I certainly do if somebody asks me nicely, Balkan. I usually don't do that uh, on my own, but if somebody wants to be represented in my runs, I never say no to that. Why should I? So, point cack. I bet I'll be... Yeah, I, I cannot do anything for you. You're going to die. So, leader speech. Mm, maybe not in the dead of the night. Okay. So. Next step is going to be all those tasty assault rifles. And, uh, well, I want to get rid of these things. They are really, really uh, making me nervous there. For sure. <sighs> well, supplies for Kevashnya Swamp. So, if they want two EMP launchers, and they'd give me some damn good stuff for that. Seriously, that's uh, amazing loot. That's pretty amazing loot. But uh, it doesn't fit into the narrative of these people here to be trading and friendly and whatnot. 
freaked out. Not gonna happen. I just don't find any particularly uh, good reason in the storytelling here for the Vampire Lord's uh, minions to, to deliver EMP launchers to some savages. Sure, they make uh, quite a good offer, but uh, realistically, Troy and his people would be more like uh, invading there and just taking what they want. But that sadly isn't possible with this game because the, the items only magically appear if we are if we are doing it correctly you know if we are doing it with the quest and otherwise they don't pop into existence that's a bit crappy but uh you you cannot uh you cannot change that so i don't follow these quests there does troy have a silent yes he does he's the side caster of the colony i skilled him on empathy because i found that uh quite uh cool way of uh, uh of representing these uh, the, the, these vampire kind of skills you know so by the way we are totally able to expand our madness so well in the long run this is uh, more, how to put it, in the late game this kind of defense ain't that, isn't solving all of my problems on its own, that's more to put it, but at the same time lumber is so easy to come by here in this biome and it, it still does quite pack a punch, you know, those traps are guaranteed triggers and uh, it still hurts even a even when you do this to a mechanoid because the the real interesting trick about these traps is they have 60 percent armor penetration even if they are just made out of wood and armor penetration that high it doesn't matter how well you're uh, how well you're armored these things will make you suffer one way or another and that's why i like them hey void welcome Wild pixel. The Athra Plura is a uh, prehistoric uh, piece of megafauna. It's no monster, okay? It's just a nice uh, thing living in our, in our mids. Hey, Gonema, welcome. Happy to see you. So, Ambrosia has rotted away in the storage. I always find it very sad to read that. But what ifs? Mm. Transport pod crash, Montoya. So Montoya, you you think you survived that? I personally wouldn't would be very very scared under these circumstances. So well, I don't give a bloody damn about that dude, honestly. I got so many other problems to take care of. So I think I can remove the uh, other leg only once it's fully healed. I think the game was weird like that. Um, these are Silings from Vanilla Psychast Expanded. But uh, the thing is, there has been a rework from the Psychasts in the Vanilla game. So there's... Uh, I just have new skills and new skill trees. So, uh, Gondama, so Yolo Hobo Gaming has recommended me, oh my god. That's, uh, that's amazing to hear. My reputation is uh, exceeding me now. Well, I, I'm really happy to hear that I was able to help you. I uh, I actually do plan to do some new tutorial stuff for RimWorld quite soon. I thought I'd do some uh, more extreme tutorial series, like a uh, guided tutorial series on a difficult naked brutality run or or whatever. I really can use some, some input because the problem for me is I don't want to come or this might come off a, a bit arrogant I but I'll take the risk so uh, you know there I have a hard time understanding what's what's hard about this game and what's not anymore after 2,000 hours in this game you you kind of lose the feeling for difficulties you know 
That's uh, it's so. I find it at this point very hard to feel back into somebody who's starting out with a game nowadays, because also the game is so darn diff different to compared to back then when I started. You know, when I started out with the game, this was still was still the beta, so um, therefore can really use some 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 friendly input from outside about what you guys can use. Why don't I use shelves in the stockpile? Because it's a bloody amount of work to uh, to get it done. Usually I start using um, shelves and the like in the stockpiles once I run out of space. I am aware of the fact that things am no longer ugly when they are shelved up, but, uh, well, what can I say? I'm a lazy bum. People are quite happy in the colony anyways. I'm, I'm very much a kind of person, I, I do only optimize if I see a good reason for doing so. <laughs> Xandra Rule kills you on purpose and Randy kills you instantly. <laughs> That's well said. It's not a bad thing at all. That only means that you are <laughs> way less, way less um, uh, lazy than me. I, I'm just uh, not diligent enough. Technically, it's an advantage because your storage room is more beautiful and your people won't hate the room that much. But uh, practically, I don't give a damn. Because they only walk through this room to pick up something and they don't stay in there too long. But uh, I have made the experience that it, it, it does pay off to have high beauty everywhere because it makes just your people happier in the, in the long run. Speaking about happiness, uh, we're going to bring up something new here, the crematorium. That's uh, Why do I talk about happiness in that regard? Because uh, ugly bodies make people unhappy. So, Pepperoni's genes have finished regrowing. I've read that the uh, regrowth um, time for genomes has been shortened, so... Uh, we can now use the genome extraction more often. Ah, yeah, I, I totally can relate. I totally can relate. Some things just freak me out as well. So... Let's do something then. Mm, using paved tiles for some neutral looks. So, uh, freezers and uh, batteries. Yeah, no problem. So, um, as you see here, this is my freezer setup. I have this room here. I have three um, coolers, all set up on minus 9 degrees Celsius. The warmer your tile is, the more of these coolers you'll need. Basically, the higher the outdoors temperature on average, the more coolers you'll need. So, uh, for a room of this size, I could use a fourth cooler in case of a heat wave, but three coolers are perfectly good on average. Batteries are also very important when you want to use wind power or solar power, because solar doesn't work at nights and wind doesn't work um, whenever it doesn't work, you know, it's quite random. And therefore you need the batteries to, um, to store the energy. Just make sure about the batteries to not uh, store them anywhere where they got no roof. They'll explode when they uh, when they get uh, struck by rain. Well, it's a short circuit, not exactly an explosion, but you get the idea. And the other thing is, um, try to keep a couple of batteries spread through your base. Don't be uh, don't be stupid like I am here. It's really well worth it to have a couple of batteries just for the reason that sometimes your people throw a tantrum, and then it's pretty good if you're not losing your only energy storage. And that's why it's also good to have that not all on one spot. So that's pretty much it. Um, the thing about the temperature exchange is that uh, the people here only go in there to grab some food and then they leave. The room will never be, as you see there, too uh, cold for that. The kitchen is uh, made like that on purpose. Only people with the um, schedule, oh no, here, work priority on cooking will ever enter this room. So uh, there's never going to be any entrance, unnecessary entrance, and that that is all really all you'll need. Doesn't uh, matter too much about the temperature, as you see. 
doesn't kill it off. And if you ever start having problems because of that, you can just uh, go 10 degrees lower on the coolers. You might need more coolers then, but technically, the lower the temperature in the room, the more, um, the more tanky it gets for situations like that. So, pig voice and trotter hands. Yeah, that's the kind of genes you want to have, dude. Ugh. Well, it's um, Hakuja's McManus. Hmm. It doesn't sound like anything I want to accept. So, um, Pepperoni, um, you're carrying your gene pack around with you. You don't need to. So, gene loss shock. Well, you know, Pepperoni is a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a uh, difficult character. You know, our slaves, sometimes they have a run-in with the god Emperor Troy, and when he's in a bad mood, you know, it's just uh, a little bit much happening there. So we made an awful quality assault rifle. Hell yeah, that's for the slaves. So, uh, well. The quality of crafting in my colony is quite bad. Because I chose a meme, the sadist meme, and that's decreasing the crafting quality. I bloody love it. Because it, uh, you know, usually I end up with, uh, with with overpowered gear every run and all. And uh, this time, it's quite fun to have that. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Ganima. Yeah. Feel free to ask away. I really like to explain things. At least it's a crafted gun. At least it's an assault rifle, you know. That's the most important thing. Even if it's awful, it's better than no assault rifle. And uh, it's way better than no gun at all. So Nelson will get there. His crafting level isn't too good. But, uh, you know, we're going to give those uh, crappy guns to the slaves. And... Uh, right on we do seem to need more components but luckily i got quite a lot of spaceship chunks lying around here so we can help ourselves but at the same time speaking about helping myself i think it's about time that we uh, go for kind of clean sweep action here so, let's do this Biotech, royalty, and ideology for you. Well, I personally think that... Uh, uh, how, well, the order is a little bit difficult. I personally think if you like special skills and uh, and, and, and superhero-like things on your, on your colonies more, and you want a little bit more of an alien feeling in your runs, go for biotech first. If you personally like more the society building and... Uh, and, uh, I don't know, colony building and the like, you should go for uh, ideology first, because that allows you to do such things like uh, going for a crazy cannibal uh, man-eating cult, or uh, going for some weirdos that uh, venerate blindness and gouge the eye also out of every new people that they want to have in their colony, whatnot. Ideology really opens up uh, a lot of new things, and uh, biotech is more about altering the people, Whereas ideology is more about altering the society, yeah, and uh, and royalty. Well, royalty I personally deem as the weakest of the DLCs. Don't get me wrong; I don't want to say that royalty is bad or anything. It just doesn't add in as much gameplay-wise as the other you know, two DLCs do. So I would totally rank um, royalty as rank three in the importance of uh, of getting those uh, DLCs. So, um, I personally would have a very, very hard time to decide which one of the, which one of them two I would grab first, if I'd had to decide. Constantly, I would take them both at once, biotech and uh, and ideology, because I wouldn't be able to decide. That's me, you know. <clears throat> But since I know that people have very different um, interests when playing the world, I think I 
did my best to give you a good impression there. Hey, L. Hey, L. Azel. I'm sorry. <laughs> my tongue just slipped over my brain, I guess. <laughs> so, Hakuja's make Mac Menace. I didn't even check it out yet. So, um, yeah. AD48. Oh, we'd get. Mmm. Boy. Jeez. I want that. So, uh, yeah. I don't want the Death Rest Capacity Serum that badly. I want the Assault Rifle, so. Let's summon another uh, Mechanoid Cluster on our map. I surely will regret that, but, uh, you know. It is as it is. So, what do we have here? It's a uh, Countdown Activator. Awesome. I mean, at the end of the day, it ain't that much of a difference to the situation before. We just have a defoliator here, and uh, its radius will expand. I guess at the end of the day it will be something like that. But it won't be touching my main um, agricultural areas. Vampire God King is the potentially a name for a cultivation simulator? Hmm, interesting. So, I'm um, not going to go anywhere close uh, here. Slave Rebellion, likely. Oh, be my guess, you fools. Be my guess, you fools. There we go. So. I found more compacted steel there. Amazing. Right on. So, I think it's about time to make some uh, containers here for the stuff. So, let's go for storage. So, I'm personally not using the vanilla shelves. I'm personally rocking the LWF's uh, deep storage mod, which gives you those pellets. I personally love those. They're my favorite ways of storing stuff, you know. So, uh, if you ever meet the creator behind Yolo Hobo Gaming again, send him my best regards. Gundama, I'd be really, really appreciating that. Have I checked Sunless Games? Yes, I did. Um, here's the deal. So, the Sunless Skies and Sunless Seas are nowhere near close to Cult Simulator out of a simple reason. Um, it's not the same team. Uh, some of the seas and some of the skies have been made from what has been what what's been left after the the creative core of that uh, of these people left the, their business. What did I do there? Um, basically, Cultist Simulator has been made by Weather Factory, and that's uh, Alexis Kennedy and his uh, wife Lottie Belvin. And these two guys are the most amazing uh, game devs, or one of some of the most amazing game devs that I know about. The people behind some of the skies and some of the seas are the people they left behind, and they are just, to put it into polite words, just not as grand <laughs> as the other people. I'm, and therefore, the games aren't bad. I, I don't want to say that uh, that uh, the Sunless games are bad, but uh, they are just not the uh, same amazing uh amazing depth and uh an enthralling uh storytelling that uh cultist simulator has in store so all in all i tried to get into some of the seas but um it didn't stick to me the storytelling was really interesting good enough for me to keep going Boy, the gameplay was horrible. <laughs> I don't like to to say it like that, but uh, I also don't don't like to sugarcoat things, you know. I just didn't enjoy it. Ooh, Zomboid. Well, that's one of the games that I did that I never was able to get into, mostly because I played too much CDDA. Yeah, well, I personally think there is nothing better than to uh, to. Uh, Cherish the community, be happy that uh, we we know each other, and you know, 
this, so. Zomboid, well, I don't think I'll ever be able to get into that game due to the fact that uh, I played so much Cataclysm. Cataclysm is just such a difficult, different uh, beast, and, uh, well, whenever I was playing Zomboid, I had the feeling like I was playing a, uh, a non-turn-based version of Cataclysm, and I'm personally a, a sucker for turn-based games. That's something I gotta admit. So, let's make sure our animals are no longer crapping into the bedrooms of people. Um, this is a standard size map. I don't go for so for larger map sizes because the uh, colonists' AI is just too stupid for that. They uh, they tend to get lost and uh, well navigate to something. Or if this would be a large map, and somebody would go from this end of the map to this end of the map to, to haul something, they might be actually uh, freezing to death on their way, or whatever. I I don't think that the uh, AI of uh, RimWorld is good enough for larger map sizes, or at least that has been always my impression. So, I do have a uh, prefabricated bill for, um, for the crematorium. Personal favorites, just uh, cremates everything stinky on the map, as you see there. Pretty good stuff. So, uh, let's start recycling things. <laughs> yeah, sure. Surely will do, my man. If that's one of your uh, requests, I can't see what I can do. So, Slave Rebellion likely. So, then... Uh, well, I mean, let them rebel. Um, Troy is going to enjoy some uh, good old-fashioned rebellion smackdown. Well, if it ain't a uh, zomboid, maybe. <laughs> I, I tried to get into the game and it didn't work out for me. And I, um... Well... I don't like to uh, go for uh, appointments with other gamers, mostly because I just have too much around my uh, around my head here with that channel. But I appreciate the gesture. Let's just uh, stay in touch for now. And if you want to, there's my Discord. You can easier uh, reach me there. God's sake, Randy! Well, he didn't hit the casket. So. Let's just uh, assume that Randy did that on purpose. I hope he didn't miss. Sheesh, there's even more steel. This place is so rich in steel, it's amazing. So, we're going to make these uh, pallets for textiles. And then we're going to bring up some more pallets for, for timber. Yep. I was just referring to Pro Project Zomboid Gundama. I didn't mention any other game as far as I know. So, yeah, leader speech. This time we're going to do that in the dead of the night because it's a vampire colony. So. Damn, encouraging. Boom. Yes, Elazel, exactly. Ah, you were referring to that. Wait a sec, so. I think you were, were talking about that, Gondima. Yeah, CDDA. I did a uh, pretty extensive tutorial series on that. I'm not happy with the quality of it, because I'm, uh, I'm a scrub and I could do much better. Or You can't see the Discord? It should be in the description box, though. So, but, let me help ya. No biggie. I gotcha. <laughs> Don't worry. 
whoever reads description boxes. I feel like the description boxes of YouTube videos only get accessed if I tell the people to. <laughs> you know, I always get that feeling. So, let's see. Did we manufacture another gun already? No. Damn. Huh. So, Nova. Crafting 7. Yeah, alright. Good enough, I'd say. Good enough. So, here we're going to just store timber exclusively so this way I, I like to organize my uh, star storages a little bit and uh, this thing here is meant to store my herbal meds actually forgot to configure it all the way So I, I seriously don't know why I let those dudes smooth out the floor of this hole. But you know, if you got them slaves working for you already. Okay. So. <laughs> I love it that these uh, mechanoids are basically more on my side than the other way around they uh, they are sitting in an area that's just so the typical that's just so much the typical staging point of of attacks that i'm quite happy oh hey welcome so how cool is the expansion it's amazing it's uh, basically i don't know how to put it it's uh it certainly has uh, brought up the the fun and passion for RimWorld all anew for me. You know, it's like uh, re re um, discovering the game again because you have so much new things happening there. And if you are a experienced player, there's just so much goodness going on there with the new Xenotype uh, mechanics, mostly because it allows you to just. Um, you know, the game is inherently more difficult due to that. You cannot uh, rely on your on your old strategies as you did in the past, like kill boxing and uh, trap mazes like these. They all don't work as good as they did before because of new xenotypes, but they weren't totally nerfed to the ground. They are still legit ways of playing the game. They're just not that much of a no-brainer anymore, and uh, totally like that. Totally like that. So let's start crafting ourselves some art here. Come on. So uh, make absolute shape. Let's do that. So we're going to work with what? Mm, since I got so much of it, we're going to work with wood. So, Bandit Outpost, we would be, well, no, they'd want me to destroy an outpost outside of, uh, of our base. I'm not buying this, you know, it's just too hard and too dangerous. All right, so, Troy, how hungry are you? Have some point keg. So... There we go. Oh yeah, he's uh, by now, I think, uh, ready for the, uh, wait a sec. Why can't I take off the leg? Remove tongue? Right, that, that's something I can do. But, uh, why not the right leg? Probably because of the blood loss still, I don't know. Sometimes I wish the game would show you all the options and then show you why they are blocked, instead of just uh, cancelling out the options that are just not accessible right now. It's sometimes a little bit uh, annoying. So, my man Noah, please finish there. 
Oh yeah, of course we have children there. Well, um, kill boxes and Azel, they work pretty good against enemy artillery. All you need to do is to force the siegers to attack you, and that's uh, not too hard to begin with. There's lots of ways of uh, getting the job done there. Sadly, I gotta, uh, I gotta disappoint you there. It's really not hard. So, let's see, my dude Zish, we all take assault rifles from this point on, and uh, let's hope that Nels is going to make a better one. Well, Matt, Margo, I think that's the easiest way to do that, to, to do that. So, uh, let's do this. You are right about that. Dr. Ollie is in town. I find it quite funny that I can uh, ask Ollie, the non-violent pawn, to uh, install an unnecessary peck leg on that dude, which is uh, technically a unnecessary amputation, but, uh, you know, he wouldn't hurt anybody ever. <laughs> so, uh, well... Can remove it. Remove part, right leg. Ah, here we go. So. You attack them and then running at you, basically. There's uh, different ways of doing that. One, uh, the safest method is to uh, just have your own artillery and, uh, and whack them with your own mortars until they attack you on... Uh, uh, voluntarily, or the other method is to use stuff like the uh, psych like a psychic shock lands um, here thing here. Um, wait a sec, no, that's the wrong one. You need to take the one that makes the peep that makes them berserk. I think that's a psychic insanity lands. If you pop a psychic insanity lands on uh, on somebody, how does that even work? Um, if you pop a Psychic Insanity Lance on, on a Siege, they'll start attacking each other. And uh, like always when I tried that, it ended with them attacking me afterwards because they uh, they felt like they, their plan was a failure. Mm. Oh, we have that situation again. Um, so the TLDR of that is uh, if you... If you want to, them to attack you, the... Um, Easiest ways are mortar shots or psychic insanity lances. That's why I personally love to buy me some psychic insanity lances whenever I see them on the market available. Well, Ganima, don't ask. It's always the same. I, I keep wondering what the hell they are doing with those uh, random um, failures. I've seen lots of people even installing um, mods for a less wonky interaction with that and I totally get why. So um the thing is Rimworld and its percentile chances are bonkers. I've seen people failing a 25 person chance 20 times in a row. That's not how chances work. So um uh, Animal Polters, yeah oh, hey, that's actually absolutely right. The key to beating an enemy siege is like 90% of the time to uh, to get them to attack you before they start um, lobbing their shells at you. Because uh, basically then the siege is, uh, is the worst, you know. That's basically when the siege is the worst. So let's carve out some slate here. So, oh, 5.6 days countdown activator. Oh, a Simpret shirt. Thank you, Randy. High quality fashion. Alright, Pixel. See you soon, man. Thanks for hanging out. Oh boy, another... Another one? Okay. So, uh, another defoliator. Hell yeah. And another countdown activity. <laughs> oh gosh. So my base 
is being defended by mechanoid clusters. Appreciate it, boys. Appreciate it. You guys are taking such good care of my base. What's a defoliator? Um, a defoliator, when it starts, it's going to kill all the plants inside that white radius. It also um, will expand that radius by 9 grids per day. The thing is, they have a maximum range, and at, after they have a radius of 100 tiles, they, uh, they stop expanding. Basically, I think, well, I'm not sure about that, but uh, I'd assume the, the range will be something like that, in the worst case. That means this part of my colony will be eventually not no longer be able to, uh, to do farming, but uh, my, my big acres down here, it'll never get that far. The TLDR is whenever enemies are going to attack me from this border, are going to have some serious trouble there. I like that. So, um, it's one of my favorite pastime activities to use Echonaut clusters to my own advantage like that. There's nothing more wicked than that. So, uh, Nils, how's the uh, rifle going? Please make me a good one for once. Mm, you can trigger them. That's the most stupid thing. It's kind of exploity, but uh, it works. Um, you take a sleeping spot and you place it below the mechanoid, just like you see there. I don't do it because that would wake them up. I don't want that. But uh, if you place down sleeping spots below a mechanoid, they will wake up by that. I don't know why that exploit hasn't been fixed until now, until now but it is as it is. It wakes up mechanoids. You just need to put a sleeping spot below them. If that's too exploity for you, well... Get close to the proximity activator, by the way, animals don't trigger. Can't send it a slave though, or something like that. I personally don't mind the exploits at all. The game is hard enough as it is, and, uh, you know. Okay then, so what happened to the gene pack we extracted? So, uh, I think that's there. Um, Hazish. Uh, well, I won't extract anything of them. Um, if I'd be waking them up now, they'd be already wandering around. That's not a stupid question at all. Um, if, and that they'd, they'd be wandering around. And uh, if you check out the Pikeman's gun range, that's the white border there, they have a darn long range. And the turrets, they also have a darn long range. Basically, I want to delay their awakening as long as possible to give my people um, some leg space to work outside. Because the moment they wake up, I have to put up a lot more safety um, protocols to make sure that nobody of my dudes will accidentally wander into this wall of death. Yeah, the turret range is uh, crazy. Yep, the map is really, really cool. By the way, the map is... Uh, only so cool because of the um the terrain mod ma uh, mod that i'm running here i forgot how it was called give me a sec that's uh looking through the list here right now Urgh. forgot how which one that was of something like landmarks or so. Sadly, I don't find it right now. Geological landforms, there it is. Just when I wanted to give up. That's uh, that's what the mod is called. That uh, that mod does create distinct shapes on the maps, so they have more of a character there. I love that mod for it, because it, uh, you know, that's how it works in real too. You know, things have uh, different uh, different shapes. Things look differently and the like, so. Which one is harder, RimWorld or ACS? Uh, first off, hi there, Harzak. And, uh, well, I personally would say that uh, if, it, if we want to count difficulty, then Amazing Cultivation Simulator is way harder to understand. But uh, if it is about uh, utilizing the game to its full extent, then I think RimWorld is way more complicated than Amazing Cultivation Simulator. It's really hard to compare these games because ACS is more like a character training simulator later down the road, where it's really more about training your, your dudes 
then it is about building a good colony, whereas RimWorld is a lot about logistics and uh, and threat management and uh, and all these things. It's also way more random and way less um, determined uh, than than ACS. So. So, uh, the Mechanoids will come and attack me if the attackers get to uh, manage to destroy the defoliators. Basically, the, uh, the, if, if the centerpiece of the Mechanoid cluster is destroyed, the Mechanoids will just start to roam into your base and try to kill you. As long as there is still a Mechanoid cluster to defend, they uh, will roam a while towards your base, but if you don't aggro them, and if you just leave them alone, usually they uh, they then wander back to their original point and uh, just hang out there. Yeah, OA, that's exactly the thing. That's why I love uh, having mechanoid clusters by now. They are actually often way better for me than the other way around. It just all depends on the troublemaker machine they bring. Sometimes they have troublemaker machines that are just uh, outright horrible. The uh, double defoliator here, I, I do consider that as a very, very lucky thing. I really think that I got off very lucky there. Well, it does have its shortcomings uh, still, Ganema. Don't uh, get me wrong. You will notice some problems there, but altogether, it is uh, it's one hell of a masterpiece. I can't, I, and I'm not gonna lie. Still, uh, obviously, they uh, the slate de uh, deposits are helping out. So, we don't need to wall everything here, but I want to wall everything here, you know? Right on. So, now our dude Point Cag is where we, we need him. Okay, so, that's that. Well, that mountain fortress here is getting better and better, eh? Do like how this wing here came together today. That really helps us out a lot. Bit annoyed about the uh, lengthy production of the multi analyzer, but it is as it is, you know. Oh boy, it's a normal quality. Damn, finally. Real guns, man. Real guns. So, um,. Let's put that up for Nelson. I'm gonna leave Norbert with the uh, chain shotgun. You know, chain shotguns are excellent weapons. Don't uh, don't take them away from people if they got one. So, damn. I think I need to uh, assign that build to to Nelson and uh, well Noah ain't a ain't a horrible crafter either but I want my best crafter on that and not my uh, second best dude yo Noah you what the hell ah now he cannot do it anymore because I I forbid him to Duh. of course he can't if it's forbidden for him to do, even if he already started the piece. It's a little bit shitty because uh, nobody can finish the assault rifle except for him now. But whatever, I do know what I have to do. So. Right on, we got limestone for days. And Ollie finally is getting closer to fin finishing his uh, sculpture there. Awesome. Well, I don't think that Noah will be able to finish that thing today, but I'll just let him work as long as possible. You know, what, what do you have slaves for, if not for overworking them into, through the entire night? 
at least if you were a vampire wart, that is. As a uh, regular human being, I wouldn't do such things, of course. But, uh, yeah. That's what I love about RimWorld so much. It is the perfect roleplay simulator where you can just decide for yourself what kind of adventure you want to get yourself into. You can be a peaceful trade lord, you can be a uh, crazy farming cooperative, you can create crazy genetic monstrosities, you can be a, a drug lord, there's just so many things. Basically, if you can think of it, you can also make it. That's one hell of a uh, premise of a game. Not too many games uh, deliver that well on that end. So, Ali, what's your artistic value? 10. Well, let's see what he'll produce. Ollie is also the uh, voice of our god emperor, um, Troy, so uh, let's see. Oh, the absolute shape doesn't come in a uh, quality. Now that's useful. So this piece is shaped like Kazuko Cohen. All right, why? Looking at the art of Mindy Wang's grave. Yeah, that's her passed away first colonist. Talking quietly to the memorial. A white aurora shines in the background. The scene takes place inside a township ne built near an oasis. Well, that's basically us. The work is executed in a glitch art style. All right. So, uh, well, I'll put that right next to the uh, grave. I think that's uh, just uh, just right. Opposite of the grave, that is. Can I synthesize blood? Um, yes, you can farm blood, but only human blood is uh, is feasible. So we can also go on our dude point cack here and uh, go for blood trans... No, not blood transfusion. Um, that's uh, what's it called here? Harvest blood pack. Where is it? Pretty sure I already zoomed past it. So, let's just uh, extract hemogen pack. There it is. It's all still a little bit uh, iffy to do, because uh, you basically have to extract every single um, hemogen pack manually this way, which sucks. That's why I'm not um, feeding um, Troy off of hemogen packs to begin with, but, uh, well, you get the idea. We got ourselves stuck in a heat wave. That shouldn't be too much of a biggie, but let's see about that. So, Noah, I hope you get up a decently uh, made assault rifle. I'll be angry if not. Ah, yeah, I love it when they, when they uh, stop their project with only one work unit left. So, it's a poor quality rifle, but, uh, well, I don't care. Like, a poor quality assault rifle is still way better than a normal quality revolver. We're not going to argue about that. So, my dear friends, I'm going to drop the ball here. I think it's a great spot to uh, end today's stream. I thank you all so much for the good company. It's been a blast. Really one of the most pleasant uh, streams since a while. I hope you enjoyed yourself as well. Feel free to leave me a comment down below to feed the algorithm. Also, feel free to leave a thumbs up. The algorithm also likes that. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, turn on the bell thing if you want to receive notifications of my new stuff. And check out the description box. There's a link to the playlist. You can find all the Sangophage adventures there. If you missed the stream, just check out Twitter and Discord. Join the fray there. I announce all, everything I do before it happens there. And feel free to check out the support links. Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee are the ways and means to support this channel. As a free content creator, I have no big sponsors behind me or anything. Every little gesture helps, and a big thanks to all the supporters out there. You are truly, truly marvelous. See you guys next time, and have a good one, y'all.